Welcome all. You've tuned in to In the Know with the Bullioness. I'm Dawn Marie, a 7K Metal Silver Associate and Top Recruiter, and today's show is going to be talking about negative interest rates. Are they good for us? My return guest is A.G. Leveraged. Welcome, A.G. Thank you, Dawn. Good afternoon. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for taking some time out to talk with us. So I wanted to start by just saying, you know, the media keeps telling us that the lower the interest rates go, the better it is for all of us. What is your take on that? Do you believe that that to be true? On the surface, it it sounds to be true. On the surface, they tell us that the lower the interest rate, the more it inspires people to move forward with purchases of homes because it widens the audience uh, availability of people who can afford a home, the lower the interest rate, the lower the monthly payment, the lower the deposit, et cetera, et cetera. In addition to that, the lower the interest rate, the lower the potential to get a loan for a new business, for a new construction, be that commercial, be that residential. So it inspires the entire economy to move forward. So from that perspective, on the surface, it sounds like a great idea. And in the beginning, we're all cheering and saying, yeah, sounds great. Let's lower that interest rate as much as we can. But if we look at other countries that have done this, that are doing this, European and Nordic countries, Switzerland, Sweden, Denmark, uh, Austria, Belgium, Finland, France, Ireland, Germany, and Japan, these countries right now are at negative interest rates. So what does negative interest rates mean? Currently, the Fed charges the central banks, I'm sorry, the the Fed charges our government 1.75% for the, as an interest for the money that's created. That's given, pardon me, to the central banks and then as, as currency it flows into the government. Negative interest rates means that that 1.75 makes its way towards zero and ultimately goes beyond zero to negative. So an example of a country that's done that now is Denmark. Denmark is currently at a negative 0.75% interest. Now what that means is that for all the savers and everyone who houses their money in the banks, the bank charges them at 0.75%. So now the question begs, who in the right mind would actually store their money in the bank in that kind of situation so that the bank managing that money is now charging the depositor. Especially when we've become accustomed to the bank taking our deposits and paying us a small interest, and they're able to do so because they profit by lending out our money at a significantly higher interest to a third party. That is a legitimate bank practice that we're accustomed to after generations. So now we're going into negatives, so the people that will suffer the most are the savers that are saving in the traditional manner of keeping the money in the bank and and letting them manage it for for a cost. So uh, It just seems so unfathomable. It just it it doesn't even seem when was the first time that a negative interest rate happened? Do you know what year that was? (laughs) That that just started happening since since actually actually since after 2008, it is a, a brand new theory <laughs> and it's and it's an unproven theory. Um, yeah. I, I call it uh, it's a communistic economic idea where the central banks attempt to manipulate not just the inflation rate but the, the return Go, going to negative is is unsound, it's illogical, it's unnatural, it doesn't make any sense. Um, in other words, so in, in Denmark and one of these other countries, if I wanted to go get a, a mortgage for a home, a mortgage loan, I would go to the bank and if it's, let's pretend it's yielding like Denmark, 0.75%, the bank would actually pay me that money to give me the, 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 the loan money to go buy the home. It doesn't make any sense because how long can this occur? Yeah. What it does is it reinforces the theory of let's just print our way, not just out of debt, but let's print our way into complete madness is what it is. Incredible. You know, 
Over the weekend, I heard, or I think it just happened last night, this Thomas Cook Company. Um, it's been around for a long time. My understanding is it's going out of business. Can you tell us a little bit about this company, its history, and why it's important for us to be aware of what's happening with the Thomas Cook? Because it could be a mo- mo- like a role model for other companies. I'm glad you're asking about Thomas Cook. That's a great question because that's a good example of the brand new zombie companies that we have nowadays. And I'll define zombie company in one moment. But let me touch one last thing on on what's occurring in some of these countries that currently have a negative interest rate, a zero interest rate, uh, or something close to that. And let's go back to Denmark. People there are they're doing what's called bank runs. A bank run is when people no longer trust the institution that's managing their money and they're withdrawing their monies. And that's not just occurring out of traditional banks. They're removing monies from their CDs, from their uh, IRAs, from their pensions, from any any kind of third-party money management. And that bank, bank run means that they're now stashing cash in their possession or going towards gold and silver, physical gold and silver. So it always ties back to the gold and silver idea. If, in fact, we in America continue to go closer to zero interest rates, which is now an inevitability because the banks have no choice but to go in that direction because they're highly insolvent, not just the banks, but also the bond market that they shoulder, as well as the corporations that they shoulder. All of these are insolvent ideas, so they have no choice but to go to zero interest rates. If and when that occurs, and if we look at the world as an example, in the countries that it's occurring, we know that at some point there will be bank runs in America. So before that happens, gold and silver is such an incredible way to save monies. So going back to well, you know. I was going to say, well, you know I love gold and silver, so I'm not going to argue with you there. <laughs> yes, it, it, so. it, 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 it is here. It's, it's, it's a, a God-provided idea. Uh, they're commodities that they are in our possession. No one can take them from us. No one can manage them from us. It just makes sense from, from all directions, especially with the current economic uncertainty that's being created because of the crazy ideas that the banks are coming up with. I mean, so, we are literally guinea pigs right now. We are. We're, we're, we're in a fishbowl, and they're doing these grand experiments that are going to take us nowhere fast. And that's, that's an unfortunate thing because a lot of lives are being disrupted. Here in America especially, we've had the joy of abundance and prosperity and all these wonderful things that, that, that freedom and liberty have, have provided and now everything's about to go topsy-turvy. So being prepared is, is so essential. Um, if, if I so may do go tell back us to Thomas a, Cook. Yeah, I was going to say, do tell us a little bit about Thomas Cook, because that's important. Yes, so Thomas Cook is a 178-year-old European travel company. It's a travel agency. They book uh, travel packages, uh, packaged holidays, hotel flights all over the world. They have employees all over the world, namely in Europe, in France, in England, in Italy, Spain, and so forth. On Monday, just yesterday, they announced bankruptcy. Uh, This is an example of the zombie company that I'm talking about. This is a super heavily indebted, publicly traded company that from the outside, when you think of a 178-year-old company company, it looks clean. It looks fantastic. Everyone is invested in this long-term company. And yet, on Monday, they stranded over 100,000 people worldwide because when they went ahead and announced their bankruptcy, they literally closed the door on that moment, and wherever people were, they were stranded. They didn't wow. take the time to, to bring them back and then suddenly close the doors. They didn't suddenly say on Monday morning, my apologies, we can't fly you anywhere because we're broke. Nope, they flew everyone where they wanted to go, and they ditched them right where they were. So they went ahead and stranded 100,000, over 100,000 people, and they fired 21,000 people that same morning who just lost their jobs, and they lost their jobs suddenly. They lost their jobs without warning. And so I wish that Thomas Cook was unique in the marketplace, but it isn't. 
a lot of companies right now can be called zombie companies, even companies that are well-known, uh, seemingly powerful American profitable companies. And yet if you look at their ledger, they're in the red. They're super heavily indebted. And that's significant because our CDs and our mutual funds and the majority of our investments in our retirement portfolios are based on those stocks, on those companies, or on bonds that are also heavily, heavily indebted derivative ideas that are also heavily insolvent. And so looking at those circumstances along with the, the coming zero interest rates and the subsequent negative interest rates that we will ultimately be going to because of our bank insolvencies, we have to move towards the purchase of gold and silver. Rather than ha being reactionary like some of the Europeans and some of the Nordic countries are having to be because they were living in bliss and suddenly all this was perpetuated upon them within a relatively short amount of time, rather than that, while we still have abundance and work and prosperity and obligation and we're still making money and everything's still moving forward, now is the time to properly prepare. Now is the time to be responsible and to purchase our precious metals and to keep them in our possession. You know, one of the things that I always um, think about is before I got involved with gold and silver, I didn't have the concept that uh, recessions were cyclical or that I mean, I've heard feast and famine, of course, but that was more, it felt like that would be more like natural disasters, you know, life interrupting, that kind of thing. And so now that I understand that recessions are cyclical, then it should be just common knowledge for everybody. It should be standard practice. When we are feasting, put some aside. But we're in such a consumerism, go, go, go environment that we're not even thinking that anything could ever go sideways. It's true. It's true. And, and, and because we're, we're generationally abundant, generationally prosperous, generationally wealthy and, and, and secure, we live in a country where the poorest of people are overweight, where people have a – we have so many uh, social nets to catch people when they go through a challenge – unemployment, disability, welfare. We have so many social programs that even those people that are without are not necessarily dying. And so we're abundant in many ways. And, and right now we have a job market where there are an excess of jobs in so many industries. So we're all very fortunate. Um, yes. It, nevertheless. Yes, Sorry, so it becomes ahead. just a practical issue of just making sure, as you said, that as we're feasting, let's, let's be prepared. So as we close today's show, give us some of your wonderful words of wisdom. And I wanted just to say really quickly that I'm so um, happy that our paths have crossed because you take these really big concepts and help just simplify them. And that's a special gift to be able to do that. So I want to really thank you so much for that and give us a great tip to continue our day on a high note. Awesome. Thank you, Don, for saying that. Before I give that great tip, I do want to mention one thing. So all these other countries at our perimeter, many of them, not all of them, are are they have a negative yielding bond. So right now, the, the, the banks, the central banks, are illiquid because a lot of these bonds are pursuing the American treasury, the, the, the treasury, the, the, the cash itself. That's why these banks find themselves without liquidity, without cash. And, and what's occurring is recently, a few interviews ago, I told you that the interest rate went to 10%. It went to 10% because between these banks, they were not trusting one another. So they needed a higher interest rate in order to lend one another money. And they weren't willing to do it for less than 10%. That's why the Bank of Last Resort, the Federal Reserve, had to come in and inject cash into these banks. Now, the problem with that whole scenario is that all these other bonds all over these countries, we just talked about negative yielding rates, they're going to continue pursuing these banks for that cash, for the American treasuries, for the, because there's a yield there. 
And so these banks, no matter how much money the Fed prints and gives them, they're going to continue to go illiquid. So the current $75 billion a day being provided to these banks is not going to be enough. In fact, it's not going to be nearly enough. They're going to have to double that, and then they're going to have to double it again, and then they're going to have to double it again. And unfortunately, that's a bad scenario for our current president because that's going to have an impact on our economy, and that's a negative scenario for our Federal Reserve, for our American dollar, and some of these other things. Okay, now putting that aside, now the happy moment. <laughs> so we, we can all learn from this by looking around us at what's occurring to our neighboring countries around the world. And preparing doesn't have to be something that is that is a worrisome thing or a stressful thing. As I mentioned before, it starts in stacking weights, in putting together a constitutional silver, in getting American eagles, in getting some of those very recognizable silver coins, even uh, even maybe bigger bars. But ultimately, we all fall in love with some kind of precious metal, if it, whether it's gold or silver, platinum or palladium. But if it's silver, is it, a, is it an old one? Is it a slab? Is it a graded coin? Is it a constitutional coin? Maybe it's just Kennedy's or just ben, Benjamin Franklin's that we fell in love with. Maybe it's the mercury dimes that are specific that we fell in love with. If it's the eagles, do we want to collect a, a, a series of eagles from every year that have ever been created? Do we want to do graded eagles so that we're putting together uh, MS65 or better of a particular series that exists? Maybe we just like Mexican coins. Some people love Mexican silver. They go to the libertards. And so there's this endless world of you go from stacking to collecting to really having a passion and a love as a hobby. And, and the hobby in, in coin collecting is almost gone. It's almost lost. So from this very bad economic moment that we're having, something beautiful like coin collecting as a hobby is going to forcefully happen to us all. And we have been partnered with 7K Metals, who is a precious metals premier buying club that offers wholesale prices with no minimums and no maximums to its members. And if you would like to be on AG Leverage's team, then go to silverpreparedness.com. That's silverpreparedness.com. In closing, we thank you so much for joining us, and we thank you so much for your support. If this message has resonated with you, do share it with those that are important to you. This message needs to get out there. Be sure to subscribe to our channel. Hit that little bell so you're notified of upcoming segments, and we'll be doing some more this week. So be sure to Keep checking in and listen to some of the new ones that we just put up in the last week. So, A.G., thank you so much for your words of wisdom. Again, just amazing. And I look forward to the next show. Thanks so much, Don. Have a beautiful day. You too. Bye.